Christians, this video will explain how all of those brilliant scientists could be so wrong for believing in the story of evolution. A common refrain from Christians who've accepted the story of evolution over billions of years as the way God supposedly created is, are you saying that all of those brilliant scientists are wrong? It's as if they're saying that once a certain threshold of agreement is met within the scientific community, 51 percent, 75, 90, I don't know, then opposition to what the experts believe is unwarranted. Christians should just accept these scientists' conclusions and modify their understanding of Scripture accordingly, regardless of what the Bible clearly states. Now, the modified results caused due to the acceptance of deep time and or evolution upon a Christian's belief in Scripture can be clearly seen when examining their interpretations of the Genesis 1-11 to text. And the more credence given to the evolutionary story, the more obvious the results become. As a few examples, despite how plainly the biblical text, for example, Exodus 20:11, doesn't support old earth ideas, those old earth creationists who accept a millions or billions of years time frame typically state the following. The days in Genesis weren't literal 24-hour days, rather vast time periods. The rock layers were supposedly laid down during these modified six days of creation, which includes the fossil record that records death and disease. So creatures were dying before sin came into the world. There was death before Adam sinned. The flood described in Genesis 6-9 was a local event, not a global flood. Now, in addition, for those theistic evolutionists who believe God used evolution to create, we could add the following. Individual kinds of animals were not created separately. They evolved from one into another slowly over millions of years. Adam was not the literal first man. Humans evolved from ape-like creatures. And the confusion of languages at the Tower of Babel was not a literal event because speech has evolved over millions of years. So what we see is that Depending on how much of the naturalistic explanation of the world a Christian accepts, they either reinterpret what's plainly stated in Genesis by modifying its meaning. For example, the global flood becomes a local flood. Or they declare the entire body of text of Genesis 1-11 to as metaphorical or symbolic. For example, Adam as the first literal man God created from dust simply becomes a symbol of humanity. Miraculous creation events become essentially naturalistic. Now, of course, the majority of scientists are evolutionists, and scientists as a group tend to be much less likely to believe in God or any higher power than the rest of society. For example, research conducted by the Pew Research Center for the People and Press 2009 found that only 33% of American scientists say they actually believe in any specific God whatsoever. The majority are atheists or agnostic. Having said that, let's just go along with the idea that Christians should accept what the majority of scientists believe and play that out to its logical conclusion regarding the modification or allegorization of Scripture. Now, we've already established the majority of scientists don't believe a God exists. So, do the majority of scientists believe the God of the Bible exists? <laughs> Obviously not. Okay, so do the majority of scientists believe Jesus is God? Well, if only 33% of scientists say they believe in any God, then the majority would likely say no to even more specific categories. So then would the majority of scientists affirm any of the following historical statements? Jesus was born of a virgin. Jesus turned water into wine instantaneously. Jesus miraculously healed disease and deformity. Jesus walked on water. Jesus Jesus calmed a storm by speaking, Jesus resurrected people, and Jesus died and came back to life. No? Well, how about the following historical accounts from the Old Testament? An axe head floated, a donkey spoke, a man lived in a great fish for three days. No. Obviously, the majority of scientists don't believe any of that because science doesn't confirm it. Brothers and sisters in Christ, you'd have to conclude that the vast majority of scientists wouldn't accept any beliefs based on the miraculous historical accounts recorded in Scripture. But are you saying all of those brilliant scientists are wrong? But you know those events happened, right? You know they happened because you believe the Bible, right? Because it's the revealed Word of God who was there and inspired the very words of Scripture. But all of those scientists don't? But 
How could all of those brilliant scientists be so wrong? Oh, I thought that was your question to us biblical creationists. Tell me why Christians should accept secular scientists' interpretations against the plain reading of Scripture in one area, but not others. Make it make sense.